Hello there. How are you? Salutations. Um, who is intelligent? You are. Who is beautiful? You are. Who is blessed from the crown of their head to the sole of their feet? Who can do all things through Christ who strengthens you? You can. All right. So I believe that you are amazing. I believe that today, this is the day the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. What we're going to focus on in this particular video is we're going to do mathematics. And it's arithmetic, but it's specifically we're looking at multiplication and we're looking at division. So um, <clears throat> one of the previous videos I did, the first part to this video um, is a, 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 was where I did I did a, a, a overview of how mathematical operations relate to one another. So we looked at addition, we looked at subtraction, we looked at multiplication, and we look at we looked at division, which are the four basic functions. So the four basic four of the basic operations of arithmetic. Okay. So now today I wanted to hone in. On looking at multiplication and division because you're pretty good with your adding you're pretty good with your subtraction from what I can remember from what we worked on um, and so what I wanted to do is to teach you because the last thing that we were really working on in math was getting your multiplication memorized I don't know how many of your timetables you've memorized completely because we you know our year went awry last year it was quite difficult um, but I'm hoping that we can recall pick up and just keep moving forward okay so don't worry or get frustrated if you can't remember. You should have your timetable, your multiplication chart handy, and then you can also work it out, okay? And we're going to be working it out together. So that's nothing for you to get stressed out about, and it's nothing for you to worry about, okay? I'm telling you that now because I know it can get frustrating sometimes when you can't remember, okay? All right. So let's get going. All right. So let's take a look here. So there are some key words. Before we even get into the problem, there are some key words I want to review. Well, with the with the multiplication, it'll be a review, but with the division, it's still kind of new. So I know that you may not remember it because it was in the other video, and it depends on how many how many times you've seen the video. Okay. So let's talk. when we're doing multiplication, there are some key words you have to remember. The factors are the numbers that we multiply. Okay. The multiplication symbol is an X, okay? In higher mathematics, it's a dot. But right now, what we're doing is just an X, okay? So when you multiply the factors, you get what is called a product. Can you say product? Product. So the answer in a multiplication math sentence is called a product, okay? The answer in a multiplication sentence in a multiplication math sentence, it's called a product. The numbers you're working to get the product are called factors. So now, here we have 2 times 5 equals 10. 5 times 2 equals 10. So now, let's look over here, okay? Let's see. Okay. <clears throat> if we look on, so the inverse operation or the opposite operation of multiplication is division, okay? So the inverse or opposite operation to multiplication is called division, okay? So now, when we look at this particular problem, we have three parts. So a division math sentence has three parts, okay? It has a divisor, it has a dividend, and it has a quotient. Okay, I mentioned that in the last video. So can you say divisor? Divisor. Very good. Can you say dividend? Dividend. Dividend. Very good. Now can you say quotient? Quotient. Quotient. Very good. So you have a divisor, a dividend, and a quotient. Okay? So now, <clears throat> those are your three parts. So if you look here, 10 is the dividend, which is the number being divided, okay? The number being divided is called the dividend, okay? The divisor is the number of parts the dividend is being broken down into. 
So if you dividing it by two, it means you're breaking it down into two parts. 10 divided by two equals five. 10 divided by two equals five. So if you had to break 10 down into two equal parts, you would get five, okay? 10 divided by two equals five, okay? 10 divided by two equals five, okay? Now let's look at the next one. 10 divided by five equals two. 10 divided by five equals two. In this problem, 10, okay, 10 is the dividend, all right, 5 is the divisor, and 2 is the quotient. 10 is the dividend, 5 is the divisor, and 2 is the quotient, okay? So 10 is the dividend, 2 is the divisor, and 5 is the quotient. So we're going to do some more dividing, but because I really want you to get comfortable with the language, I'm going to just do a couple of them where I want you to circle or tell me which, or we're going to circle which part is which, okay? So we'll do three problems for dividend, we'll do three problems for divisor, and we'll do three problems with the quotient, okay? All right, let's take a look. So if we're working with, let's start working with the dividends first, okay? And this is our first problem. All right, uh, if we do, hmm, oh, okay, oh yeah, sorry, and I didn't explain this. So, <clears throat> division problems can be written in two ways, and they mean the exec. It's the same operation, it's just two different symbols, okay? So, 10, you, a division sign can look like this, or it can also look like this. Okay, they both mean dividing. It's just how, it's just the number sentence is written differently. Okay, it's the same thing. It's just the number sentence is written differently. Okay, so if we look here, <clears throat> so if we look here and we have um, 10 divided by five equals two, right? Now, this is still 10 divided by five. This is 10 divided by five equals two. 10 divided by 5 equals 2. That means the exact same thing. It's asking you to do the exact same thing as if you've seen it like this. 10 divided by 5 equals 2. Okay? 10 divided by 5 equals 2 is the same thing as 10 divided by 5 equals 2. Okay? So now, we're going to look at a couple problems and we're going to kind of practice what identifying the dividend, the divisor, and the quotient, okay? So now, the dividend, let's say we're going to do, um, uh, it has to be one that we're not already going to do. Okay, let's do, okay, yeah, I don't have that on here. Let's do 6 divided by 2. Now, what number now this is this is how inverse operations work these are simple enough division problems right so we know that 2 times 3 equals 6 right 2 times 3 equals 6 so therefore 6 divided by 2 equals 3 it's really that it's really that simple if um or if you had to do it you can take six circles Right? So let's say, for example, we have six circles right here. One, two, three. Okay? And we needed to divide it into two parts. Four, five, six. Okay? So two is an even number. So you're always going to create an even, like an even, an even, well, it'll be even set or a fraction thereof. But in this part, we're not doing, we're not yet necessarily dividing to create decimals. We're, we are dividing to create whole numbers. So it, I'm sorry if that's like too technical, but I don't know another way to explain it off the top of my head. So I'll charge that one to my brain and not to my heart. Okay. So look, so six divided by two, 
we have six circles here, right? And we have to, so we have six circles and we need to divide them by two. We need to divide it into two equal parts because two is half. Any times it half, half, it means it's going to be the same on both sides. So what you do to one side, you're, what you give to one side, you're going to give to the other because it's in half. Okay. So now if we have six divided by two, right, and we have six circles and they have to be equal and we put it down the middle, how many do we have on each side? Three. Very good. So six divided by two equals what? Three. Very good. So therefore, two, when you have two groups of three, so three times two equals what? When you have three groups of, when you have two groups of three, how much do you have? Six, okay? So three times two equals six, okay? Okay. Okay, and six divided by two equals three, okay? So six divided by two equals three, and three times two equals six, all right? So now, our, in this problem, our dividend, okay, is the number that's being divided. So which number is being divided? Which number are we breaking down? Six, very good. So six is the dividend. Okay, now how many parts are we breaking it into? How many parts? What what are we dividing it into? That is the divisor. Okay, that's the divisor. The divisor's job is to come in and say, hey, I've been told that you need to break down and you have to be either two, three, four, five, six, whatever the number is. And in this case, the divisor is what? Two. So it went to six. The divisor walked over to six and say, hey, I need two parts. So you got to break it down into two parts, okay? And so that's the divisor's job. The divisor's job is going to break it down into two. So now, when it was finished, you have two parts of three, okay? Two parts of three, all right? And so three is complete and three is whole, okay? It's a whole number. It's not a fraction because two goes even, evenly into six, okay? Two goes evenly into six. So our answer then is called the what? Quotient. Quotient. The answer is called the quotient. So if even if I gave you a, a, a word problem and I said, what is the quotient when you divide six into when you divide six into two equal parts? You would tell me the quotient is three because the answer is three. Okay, now answer and quotient aren't necessarily syn synonyms because every answer isn't a quotient, though every quotient is an answer. Okay, did I confuse you? So we only use the word quotient when we're doing division. We only use the word quotient when we're doing division. We only use the word product when we're doing multiplication. But they both mean answer. Okay, so now. Those are some of, the, so, so these are, okay, so that's that problem, okay? All right, so we have six divided by two equals three, right? And we've divided the six into two equal parts, and it's three in each part. Okay, let's do another one. Excuse me. <clears throat> we'll do another one. Let's do, uh, <clears throat> Let's do 14. I think I've already, I think I'm using 14 on the paper. Another problem later. Actually, I am not. We can do 14. Okay, so now, 14, we can do two things. 14 divided by 2 equals 7. And 14 divided by 7 equals 2. Because when we do multiplication, when we do multiplication, it doesn't matter. 7 times 2 is 14. 2 times 7 is 14. So in operations, in, excuse me, in multiplication, multiplication is one of the few mathematical operations where the order really doesn't matter. 
It doesn't matter at all. You can do two times seven or seven times two. The answer will still be the same. All right. But when we're dividing now, when we're dividing, it's important to note what the divi what the divisor is. What the dividend is clear. So here the dividend is 14. Okay. The divisor is two. So when the divisor is two and the dividend is 14, the quotient is seven. The quotient is seven. The answer is seven. Okay. Now, when we when the when the dividend is 14 and the divisor is 7, the quotient is 2. The quotient is 2. So, when the dividend is 14 and the divisor is 7, the quotient is 2. Okay? When the dividend is 14 and the divisor is 7, the quotient is 2. Okay? So, what did I just say? I said that 14 is the total, is the whole number that we're dividing. And we're going to divide it first into two parts, to two parts of seven. Okay? Then we're going to divide the 14 into seven parts of two. Okay? So let's see what that looks like. So now, right here, we have 14 circles, okay? So we got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. We have 14 circles. We need to divide them into two. Do you see an easy way that we can divide them into two? Yes, because how many rows do we have? We have two even rows. How many are on each row? Let's count. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. We have seven on each row. Okay, so then that confirms that 14 divided by two equals seven. Okay, now let's look at the second one. We have 14 divided by seven. All right. And we know that it's 2. So how do we verify? Well, I paired the circles up. So 2 so two can be half or pair or double. Okay? So now we're going to look at what are pairs. How many pairs of 2 do we have when we break down the number 14? Well, we have, let's see. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Okay. So let's look. Let's look at how many columns we were able to create. This is one, two, three, four. Okay, so if you look here, now, when we divided it by 2, when our divisor was 2, okay, we know the answer is 7. So we were expecting to get how many columns? 7. So we got 7 pairs. When we divided, 14 divided by 2 equals 7. So we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So now, again, these are our keywords. I'm going to go ahead and wrap this video up, and then we'll do another one where we'll actually practice the math problems, okay? So in division, there are three major key terms. You have your divisor, your dividend, and your quotient, okay? The dividend is the number that's being broken down, okay? The divisor is the number that's being used or that will tell you 
how many parts, okay? How many parts to divide the, the, the whole into? And then the quotient is the answer, okay? So here we had 14 as a dividend, two as a divisor, and seven as the quotient. Here we had 14 as a dividend, seven as a divisor, and two was the quotient, okay? So if you ever have any questions, you can always go back and review, but remember those three key words for division, divisor, dividend, and quotient. Those are the three major parts of any division problem, okay? So with that, I'll wrap this video up, and I have another one coming there shortly. I love and appreciate you. I think that you are brilliant. You are talented, and you are absolutely a gifted scholar, and you can do anything you put your mind to, okay? I love you, dear heart, all right? I know that you had a blessed day. Shoot for the moon, because if you miss, you'll still be among the stars. I know these are all colloquial sayings, but it's important to hear them because I want your internal dialogue to be so powerful and so beautiful that you never, ever forget who you are in Christ and who whose you are, all right? So I love you. Um, and I'll see you soon. Peace.